it. So today I'm uh, going to be doing a few or some inoculations with uh, some of the liquid cultures. So this is just a liquid culture that I prepared yesterday and it consists of uh, light malt dextrose and uh, 500 milliliters of water. And we're going to just take simple uh, transfers or just slight uh, tissue transfers and place them into these jars and allow them to, to grow out and use that for spawn production here at our, at our farm. Right, so yeah, I just have a stack of petri plates. So this is just, uh, every one is its own, own strain or species that I want to kind of propagate and grow out throughout the liquid culture. So yeah, we have like an HE0, and Fute, which is a lion's mane. That'll stand for Herusium arenaceus. And we have actually four lion's mane strains that we're gonna grow throughout uh, today. So we'll see what that looks like. So just take the plate, throw some uh, alcohol on it, make sure that it's uh, nice and clean. And then I'll simply remove the parafilm. in front of that HEPA filter. And I'm just gonna heat up a scalpel really quick to kill off any kind of bacteria or anything that we don't want making its way into our liquid culture. And it would just be a nightmare to, you know, ruin that, so. Also, what I wanna do is kinda loosen up the lid. Cover that plate back up and put it in a stack. And we'll just make sure we label it so we know what strain it is. Put that aside. Kind of just prepping myself up, removing the removing the lid, uh, the ring at least, before I uh, start using my scalpel. That way I don't make a mistake or, or drop anything. And then yeah, when I uh, remove the lid of the plate or put it back on, I really try to keep my uh, fingers right around the top edge of the plate and basically minimize the chance of my fingers getting any kind of contamination uh, on the agar as I uh, move it uh, on, and off, uh, on and off the plate. So yeah, the lab uh, at this point is basically 10 foot of uh, HEPA filtration. So it's just a few HEPA filters that are built into these cabinets. Then there's a housing atop uh, each of the cabinets that has a blower attached that basically pulls air in and pushes it through the HEPA, HEPA filter at a rate that basically makes sure that air coming out of the filter is sterile uh, and, and free of any kind of airborne particulates or any contaminants. And uh, it also basically pushes any kind of dust that could land on your work or in your area of work. Uh, basically ensuring a sterile work area. So that's utilized in this lab. And then we also have uh, air coming in from outside of the lab to create more of a positive pressure in here. So that keeps any dust for com from coming into the room or any kind of contaminants that we don't want. Uh, as well as it really uh, helps keep the temperature in here where I want it to be because I noticed without, you know, air circulating in from outside of the laboratory, we'd have the lab heat up to well above 100 degrees. So that would add on to cool down times and basically delay the process of getting in here to, to get work done. So that was uh, basically one of the reasons why I, I went for having both sides or two flow hoods bringing in air from outside because it does get pretty hot in here when uh, 
we unload our substrate. We usually have about 2,000 pounds of substrate cooling in here at a time. So anything to do with making your own cultures or growing out grain spawn or to the production of your mycelium in culture form is the most important part of your mushroom growing journey or part of the process. Uh, just because this is going to be the future of, of your growing. Um, as, as far as what kind of production you can do, this is going to be the life of uh, whatever you're doing. You're, you're, whether you're producing for food or, or for medicine or for your, you know, your own production uh, for, for clients, this is going to be the, the life of your business uh, or whatever, you, you know, life of your grow. So it's super important to basically ensure that you don't really try to cut any corners. And, uh, but for the most part, it's really simple and really easy uh, to understand. Just do some research and experiment, really, for the most part. And it'll be good to go. But yeah, it is the most important part of the process. Uh, each of these jars is uh, 500 milliliters. So we'll turn this into 500 milliliters of myceliated liquid culture. And with that, I mean, we can inoculate one pound of grain spawn per milliliter. So with that, that's 50 pounds of grain, or 500 pounds of grain spawn. Uh, and then that can actually be turned uh, into another inoculation of 10 times its uh, original inoculant. So we're looking at 5,000 pounds of grain spawn from just one jar. That 5,000 pounds can be used to inoculate tons of sawdust substrate. Uh, so it's just super important to get this right because it's going to eventually be used to grow over 100,000 pounds of mushrooms. So You get bacteria that blooms in a matter of hours compared to the, the rate that the mycelium grows out at. So it's very important to make sure that if you're like listening to some music, uh, you're not like singing in the, you know, during the course of your transfers. Because, you know, I mean, I've even read where or a researcher was doing some singing while they were working in front of their plates and they were getting a lot of contamination. Uh, and once they kind of noticed that, they stopped and the contamination went away. So it's really important to just know when, when the right time to, to talk or breathe. And if you don't understand, like, any of that, just wear a, a mask um, until you kind of get the hang of it. So when I make up my uh, liquid culture, I don't do any kind of boiling of the water or anything. So I just add room temperature water to the jar. And then I measure out the right amount of nutrient. Um, it, once it's sterilized, there is a little bit of uh, color change to the solution. And you do see a little bit of sediment floating around. So it's just from the the additives that have been added to the water, which is, in this case, just like a light malt dextrose. Um, in other cases, people use like a honey or corn syrup. Um, all kinds of stuff can be used uh, to make it. You can do like a, a grain water liquid culture. Um, some people use like coconut water, um, all kinds of stuff. So that's nothing to be really worried about. These were just removed from the sterilizers. Once the mycelium uh, runs through it, that sediment will actually disappear. And we're basically just trying to back up the whole, uh, the whole library. This is basically the, the majority of the strains we grow. Not all of them, but we're just turning it all into a liquid culture reserve to just have on hand as well, because uh, sometimes it's really nice just having that liquid culture available. But yeah, I just put some extra gloves on because I um, had a hole at the tip of my glove. So instead of uh, taking off the glove and putting on new ones, um, whenever I take the gloves off, my hands are usually kind of sweaty. So it gets really hard to put on gloves. So I guess a tip is I just put on gloves on top of those gloves and they just slide right on. Um, and then that way I don't have to break a pair of gloves trying to trying to put it on my hands. So that, that's really it, you know. And these aren't the ideal gloves that I even like to use. These are like the vinyl exam gloves. So they uh, tend to crack and break easily. 
So when you're kind of working through your jars or your plates um, or anything, I've noticed that like, especially at the fingernail, fingernail area, uh, they rip, so. But, you know, with what's going on every, you know, currently with the state of events, I'll take uh, whatever glove I can get. And, uh, you know, that way I'm wearing gloves too because I'm, I'm constantly, you know, dousing my hands with this alcohol, uh, isopropyl, to, you know, sanitize them or, you know, disinfect them between uh, transfers or, or movements. And that happens repeatedly throughout the day. Uh, so without gloves, uh, I've tried it before, you end up with uh, severely cracked hands, uh, you know, and they'll start bleeding and stuff like that. So, yeah, gloves do come in handy for, for doing this kind of stuff. And I just have some pre-sterilized bags of spawn. So we'll just be taking some Petri plates and using that to create a bag of spawn that will be called the G1 or generation one bag. And then that will be used to produce 10 more generation two bags. And then from there we can move those into production bags and move to fruiting. So I'll we'll just heat our scalpel up again. We have our Petri dish uh, awaiting to be transferred. Then we have a bag of sterilized grain. In this case, I believe this is uh, our surrogum. Yep, this is a surrogum grain. Just prop that bag open just like that. So usually you'll, you'll use a Petri plate, or I will, and uh, use it to inoculate two bags, or 12 pounds of spawn. Um, but in this case, I'm just using it to make one bag. It'll speed up the colonization times and uh, just make it quicker. And I don't really need two bags right now. Again, seal it until it's properly sealed. In this case, this spawn bag is a mix, or this one is just straight soft red winter wheat. Then we're growing out reishi mushrooms, or reishi mushroom mycelium on this uh, grain. One of the things I do with the bags is uh, break the agar wedge up through the bag as you mix it. And that kind of creates more inoculation points for the mycelium to run through your grain spawn. So we have the spawn inoculated and uh, we have six bags here. And this will turn into 60 more bags of grain spawn here in about two weeks. We'll start that and uh, from there we can uh, just move it to the next part of the, the life cycle or the pro process. So 